Welcome back to the arena of motorsport, SWAT Corps Raceway, just outside of Pretoria, and big crowds coming out here to be entertained by two-wheeled action now for the South African Superbike Championship. And in this championship, man, have we got some great battles to come. Once again, there'll be 600s and thousands combined in the category, which means it's going to be a little bit of niggle, particularly on the slightly shorter circuit. 2.4 Ks to play with here, and the thousands and 600s normally mix it up on very similar lap times. It's interesting to see what's going to happen at the front end of this championship with Steven Udendahl joining us with international duties and on the break from Moto2, and he's already put it on pole position. So that's a man to watch out for at the front. Is there going to be any concern from Clint Seller, Lance Isaacs, or David McFadden? What do you think, Rob Portman? I think it's going to be epic stuff. It's great having Steven Undal bringing his international experience here to showcase it not only at the Extreme Festival of Motorsport, but just step up the level from these top contenders. Mac Flash, we know his international quality. Great to have Carrick Flock back. He's always a wild card at the front end of this field. Watch out for the wild child. And Dylan Barnard on the MPL Nutrition Bike stepping up his game so far in 2019. Yeah, getting on the podium at the last round definitely has given him confidence. Good to see this man back as well. Byron Bester, birthday boy only a couple of days ago, so he'll be looking for a birthday present early on. Mornay Kaldanas, great to also have him back on the grid, recovering from a massive injury. And it's the front end of the 600s. Blaze Baker, the number one plate, coming under massive pressure from the Cape Town kid. It's Kewin Snayman in third place. Watch out for another Cape Townian, Jared Schultz, right on the pace here at SWAT Corps. I see Bambino back in action as well on the King Price Extreme and looking for a chance now to just get into that podium hunt. To be followed by Dion Nelson and Tinny's definitely giving him something that he can ride on today. Yeah, Dion Nelson's going to be up there. Tarek van Amava, great having him back also from international duties over in the European 600 Championship. So plenty of international flavor here as we get under starters orders. Ready for the lights to go out. Listen to those revs pick up. We go aerial material. Good start there from Udendahl. Great start from Lance Isaacs. Squeezing out. Seller down into turn number one. And around the outside comes McFlash. Wow. Good start there from David McFadden. Can he keep it all together? No. He just slots in. And he's got ahead. He's got through on Seller. And Garrick Flock's having a go as well. What a start there from Flock. Seller down to fifth place. Oh, Garrick Flock out of the seat there. The Metzler tire is working overtime already. But Seller, yeah, the biggest loser there. He's down in fifth place. Got a lot of work to do. And it's not easy getting those super bikes past, especially Carrick Flock here at SWAT Corps. So Seller, Byron Bester and Dylan Barnard right on his tail. There is Mornay Kaldanes and he's got the first of the 600s. That's Kewin Snayman. Good start for them. Then it's uh, Jared Schultz. Blaze Baker down behind Dino. Yeah, down in third place of so the two championship leaders not getting the start they wanted. Good start here from Lance Isaacs, tucked in behind Udendahl, looking to try and get away from this pack. Seller's up through and into fourth place ahead of Flock. That's a good move from Seller. He knew he had to make that early on. He could not afford to get stuck behind them. He's going to try and chase down Mac Flash, Udendahl and Isaac. Such an impressive performance now. Loving life on the old school BMW still. Wait until Isaacs gets that new machine. But really jelling with the Metzler tyres. Out front it is Udendahl across the line for the first time of asking, can now the rest of the field stay with a Moto2 rider. And Flock is staying with Seller, that's for sure. Byron Vesta trying to close things down there on the high-tech evolution bike and looking for a chance now to just try and get in there. Oh, what a move there from Baker. Oh, that's shouting. Baker diving up the inside and getting through, I think, on Kuhn's name, man. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Blaze Baker had to make that move. I think it was Jared Schultz and he shoved out of the way. Isaacs, look at that BMW, all kinds out of shape. They're going to turn forward. It's fourth gear. You roll on gently here. Traction control working overtime as they come up the hill. There's David McFadden still holding down that third place, but coming under more pressure now from Clint Seller. Byron Best, a good start there from him just behind the leading pack. Yeah, looking over the shoulder there, Kieran Snowman's concerned. He knows. Ooh. A little wide from Udendahl. Yeah, Udendahl ran wide. And here comes Lance. Lance up at the inside. Oh, the Superbets BMW should have gone there. He could have made that move stick. And Udendahl slams the door shut. Says, no, no. I'm not going to let you through now. Yeah, Lance really should have gone there. He should have shoved that Superbets BMW on the inside. Block pass style because it would have just disrupted the rhythm of Udendahl a bit. You cannot allow Udendahl in this kind of rhythm. Look at Gary Flock using all the track and more coming onto the front straight. This is Jared Schultz running third in the 600s at the moment. Just behind Baker and Kewin Snowman, it looks like. As the big thousand cc boomers are at the front end. Great ride from uh, Byron Bester in a better ride here from Dylan Barnard and Monac Aldenes. Not too far behind that leading pack. Bambino starting to come through as well. Watch out for Dino as he comes up there. This is Baker's point of view. Have a listen to this. 
That's basically almost everything she's got there through turn three. That is flat taps, fifth gear at 200 million k's an hour. <laughs> Impressive stuff there on that Yamaha R6 Odendal. The beautiful Moto2 hang-off style there of Steven Odendal at the front end of this field. You can see that pretty heaven. No moves have been made just yet, but it's coming down to that halfway race distance now where Seller, especially, has got to start making moves. His nearest championship rival is Isaacs. Odendal at the front end of this field is not scoring points, so at the moment it is Isaacs who's going to pick up the 25 points. Oh, right it down. Mornay Caldenace. Oh, on his return ride back to Swatkops, just not having it its own way. Good to see that he's up and okay there. He has the lead of the 600 battle. Blaze Baker's going to line something up going into turn two. On the brakes, and he gets through. Beautiful. Absolutely perfectly done. Getting into turn two there, takes the lead, and moves Q and Slam on down into second place. Oh, a big moment there for Barnard. Barnard off the saddle. That's going to allow Bacon to maybe close down on him. And there's Bambino on the inside of Schultz for third place in the 600s. Yeah, Schultz is struggling a little bit now. He's, been, he's had, had a couple of really big passes made on him, and he's just dropping down there behind Bambino into, into fifth place overall in the 600s. He's got some work to do. Clint Seller, traction control not activated on that King Price Yamaha. Oh, and our problems for McFlash. I was looking and wondering where he had gone. Some kind of issue for McFlash as he's in pit lane. There is Blaze Baker leading the 600s with Dylan Barnard on the 1,000. There is second place, Kewan Snayman in the 600s. So it's championship leader, second in the championship there, holding first and second. And yes, Dion Nelson a little bit further back. He'll want to pick up his pace, running in fifth place at the moment in the 600s. Now the TRD bike just working hard there at the front end. No one working harder than him. Check it flag time for Steven Undal. What a welcome return. He's on holiday and he comes to take us African Superbike Championship victory. Yeah, he stepped up the pace here. There's no doubt about that. Henny, the chicken flag man, he is out. Urendal does pick up the win. He has Blaze Baker. He's going to hold off the charge there of the 1,000cc rider. That is the MPL nutrition bike of Dylan Barnard. But it's a brilliant win there for Blaze Baker. Oh, what a beautiful shot. And I wonder why Seller's not popping the win. It's a bit windy out there. That's why he just took it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmation of the results, though. Urendal taking the win. Lance Isaacs on the Superbets BMW in second, ahead of Seller on the King Price Racing Yamaha, and Flock in third. Blaze Baker in the 600s, ahead of Kewan's name on Dino Iozzo and Jared Schultz on his ASAP World Racing Yamaha R6. Let's go down into pit lane and catch up with your winner, Stephen Urendal. It was uh, my very first race on 1,000. I must admit, it's, it's quite tough. Eh? Uh, you have to always think also about using the traction control so I always have to keep my brain switched on you know so uh, yeah happy to come and race with the guys and uh, fantastic day out here at Swatcorp so they're doing a great job and the winner of the super sport class there Blaze Baker what a ride didn't have the ideal start we had a shock of a start going down into last through turn one but you know, I just I thought to myself keep it cool and uh, take bit by bit and yeah happy to be back on the top step of the podium after a while and uh, let's try repeat in the second race coming to the line now this is the man they've all got to beat rob and what a performance from this man in the first one it was incredible stuff and look for those lap times to tumble now the metzler tires really are loving life here at swat cups raceway on the grid then the lights are going to go off then we're underway for race number two Stand by for those lights going off, and Woodendahl is always good off the line, so is Isaacs. He had a fantastic start into turn one, and he's had another good one. He's got up the inside of Seller and McFadden, and into second place as we go on board, looking straight into the eyes there in that AGV helmet of Isaacs. He's got to go, I was saying, he's got to go on the inside, but Woodendahl just closes down that line, McFadden around the outside, so whatever problems he had in race number one, looks like he sorted. So he does get a little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump out of this. Neyman and Baker, elbows out. It's uh, steady on, boys. It's only two corners in. Nicely done. Hey, little hand on the back Jeez. here to say, I'm right here if you're going to try and squeeze me out. But it is Schultze who's actually got the drop on all the 600s. He leads out over Baker and Sneiman. And then it's uh, Dino Yotso. And just behind him, much better start coming out of Tarek van der Merwe. Those poor Rainer boots of Steven Urnendahl are picking up a lot of the SWAT Corps star here today. There is the MPL nutrition bike of Dylan Barnard. A much better start there with him. Byron Bester on the high-tech elements. Yamaha R1 just ahead of him. A much improved ride this from uh, Byron Bester on his return after that injury that he's had. But it is Urnendahl at the front end of this field. Isaacs is trying to stay with him. Baker on the inside of Schultz. Unable to make it stick. That's for the lead of the 600 race. Schultz runs a little bit wide. And Baker just shoves it on the inside. That rapid bike system in that R6 is working to perfection. Eat him up and into turn one. He makes it stick. Sneiman now trying to go around the outside of Schultz here. And uh, Dino's coming along for the ride. And I think Sneiman might have got through. Jared Schultz under threat. Here. Let's see if Sneiman comes through on the inside line through turn three. Oh, it's very close between the two of them. But he just shuts the door and keeps out Sneiman's charge. At the front end, Stephen Window, right where he was in race number one. You could see the thousands just extending a little bit over the 600s. Byron Bester right there in the mix as well. Just behind Carrick Flock, just outside that top five. But again, a good recovery ride. There is Q and Sneiman. 
Neyman side by side with Schultz. Going to be a change up there for second place in the 600s. At the top of the hill, Isaacs and Seller are all over the back of Stephen Undan. You can see now Seller. Seller looks like he's got a little bit extra pace here. He's trying to make the move on Isaacs, potentially down into the final turn here and charge after Stephen Undal. Oh, looking for an inside line. That's what Lance should have done. And then, fortunately, he does lose it out. Look at that. Perfectly done from Seller. He comes across the line. But as they cross the line, that's lap record pace coming out of our leader, Stephen Udendahl. A one minute point nine around Swatkops and race number two. That is incredible lap times from these front runners. Seller, though, also just put in his personal best lap time. A 101 dead there. So the King Price Yamaha is starting the charge. There is the performance technique. Yamaha R6 of uh, Blaze Baker at the front end of this field. A lot of tuning has gone into that bike and you can see Blaze Baker loving it out there but he's coming under charge now from Kuhn's name and Dino Iotso making a good, good day so far for King Price he's up into third overall in the 600s we are going through turn four now a little bit of a maneuver there from the two nutrition bikes it's NPL nutrition versus the evolved nutrition bikes there and then the 600s in full flight through Volkswagen corner as they head up the hill there Kuhn's name has closed on Baker Baker could be in a bit of trouble here in the latter part of this race oh, I just love watching Stephen Wendell come out of that turn at the top of the hill he gets that Yamaha stood up so far Look at this, McFlash now charging down on Isaacs. So Isaacs, not the same kind of pace we saw in race number one. A little bit of a slide there. So he's obviously got a little bit of grip issues now on that BMW because he's not showing the same kind of pace as he showed in race one. There is the Evolve Nutrition high-tech elements bike of Byron Bester. And he's coming in to charge a better performance in race two so far from Dylan Barnard. Here we go, McFlash. Oh, going around the outside. You can see Isaacs just closed that inside line, forcing McFlash to the outside, but there is no room there. So McFlash trying to make it a Yamaha 1-2-3 on the the podium and this is similar to what we saw in Cape Town earlier this year those two boys fighting so hard for honors on the podium and Seller in the mix as well as they come through now we're on the final lap and oh McFlash has gone missing McFlash has made a mistake somewhere and he's gone missing Isaac's now all on his own in third place top of the hill Stephen Wendell gonna make it a double on the day not interfering with the championship not taking the championship points but again what a performance from the Moto2 race a great having him here part of the extreme festival of motorsport and back in national racing. He really has put on a magnificent show. Look at that last lap coming through that flick flack, giving a little wheelie there as well. Incredible stuff from our world championship racer. Yeah, Moto2 European world champion, Moto2 contender at this stage and across the line with a double victory there for the 1,000 cc's. Udendahl wins out over Seller on the King Price Racing Yamaha. It's Isaacs on the Superbets BMW and Garrick Flock, DCCS scoring Yamaha in fourth. Blaze Baker, double win on the day for him. Kewan's name and then second. Dino Iotso on the podium in third ahead of Jared Schultz and a good day in the saddle for Lance Isaacs the second race I think where, where Clint and Stephen had the had a bit of an edge on me was uh, was the early laps and uh, you know they, they got ahead well Cl uh, Stephen got ahead and then Clint got past me going into into the last turn and uh, it was pretty much plain sailing from him I must say you know their bikes were really really good coming out of uh, out of turn two up through turn three and the rest of the track I'd, I'd catch them but uh, there's still plenty of fight in this old dog left uh, my Superbet uh, BMW S1000 RR definitely, uh, it's definitely uh, doing its job. I have to say, and I cannot wait for the new bike. So uh, the boys better watch out. The, the, the old buddies can definitely have a point to prove later. A very impressive double win on the day for Blaze Baker. But it's a man in second place we're going to catch up with, Kewan Stamon. Uh, I just couldn't get close. I really wanted to have a lunge on the last lap, but it just didn't seem to work out that way. Had a really difficult weekend, electronics problems all weekend. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited for the next one to make amends. Seller heads to the next one in East London with a couple of points ahead of Isaacs McFadden and a good charge from Dylan Barnard down in fourth. In the Super Sport Championship, it's all about Blaze Baker ahead of Kewan's name and heading into the next round on the 31st of August down in East London. All this action from the Formula 1600s is proudly brought to you by Investchem. And the South African Superbike Championship is proudly brought to you by Liqui Molly and their associate sponsors.